door. I welcome you again to this moment of 10 minutes with God in Jesus' name. The Word of God says in Hosea chapter 4 and in verse 6 that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I'm going to look at, expand this, and explain what it means and how it applies to our life today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, breathe upon this word as we share it at this time in Jesus' name. Amen. The Word of God says here that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, what does this mean? What is knowledge? What is my people? What is destroyed? The people he's talking to about here are the people of God. Because this is the prophet Hosea talking the mind of God to the people. And he said, God is saying that you, that you belong to God because you don't have knowledge. That is why you are being destroyed. Because of you don't have knowledge. People that know, they always rule and reign over those who don't know, directly or indirectly. Somebody that is on the throne and does not know anything will depend on those who know. Or those who know are the ones that will be ruling indirectly. That is why I'm pleading with you today. Seek knowledge. Pursue knowledge on every face, on everywhere. Seek after knowledge. Don't just read the Bible. Read secular books too. And I will tell you the reasons as we go on. In this verse, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. These people are the people of God. They are destroyed, destroyed. Look at the word, hard word, difficult word. They go, another verse, the scripture says they are going into captivity because they, they have no knowledge. I pray you will not go into captivity in Jesus' name. Don't just say amen, but look for knowledge. I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean as we go on now. Number one, some years ago in some Christian churches, some Christian assemblies, they will say, don't watch television. And then as the time goes on, they say, don't watch television, television is evil. And people who have televisions in such assemblies, they carry that television and they go out, they throw the television away. And they throw it away, they throw it off. Now, everything we are watching on the television, if you go on the internet on your phone, and you go on the internet on your phone, you can watch TV on your phone. The TV you don't want people to watch, to put in their sitting room and sit down as a family and watch and enjoy different programs, now is on their phone. Now, those churches that are saying people should not watch television at that time, they are viewing programs now on television. They are showing their church programs now on television. They have programs now, they will bring out big television, they call it so, they call it like a satellite, people will connect to the television from different places. What happened to those people who didn't watch television all those years? And now they are said to be watching television. Has God changed? Did God change what he said they should do? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Another thing that we know that happened in some places is in Christendom is that they said, when you want to get married, then you pray to know the will of God. You pray to know the will of God. That thing pisses me off sometimes. It pisses me off very big time. Does it mean we should not pray to know the way they lay emphasis on the will of God? They don't lay emphasis on any other thing pertaining to the will of God as that. When you are getting looking for a job, they don't ask to pray for the will of God when it comes to job. They will say you want to get a good job. You want a good paying job. A job that pays you well. You want to work in a good company. You want to work in an oil company. You want to work in a company that, that is international. But when it comes to marriage, they say you should pray and know the will of God. In fact, in some assemblies, they will tell you not to, not to, ex, not to pray for I will of God. All these things, people have been led astray. People have been destroyed. Destinies that are supposed to be great and mighty have been destroyed because of this matter of the will of God in marriage. I can go on and on on this marriage issue of will of God and on and on. I will advise my own children, if you want to know the will of God on anything, go for the best. Don't go for the worst. The will of God is prosperity. The will of God is the best for you. It's not the worst. 
It's not the worst. Yes, if eventually you you you, you land a job that looked not promising, because of the blessing of God upon your life, you can transform the company and the company can move up. You can start a company from scratch and build it up. Yes, I'm not doubting that. But when a teaching is centered on the fact that if you are rich, that means you are ungodly. That is a destructive teaching. That is why people that are in such assemblies, they are poor. Even when somebody is rich, they will assume that he's not spiritual. Where is poverty linked with spirituality? No. Poverty is not linked with spirituality. Who is more prone to sin? Who is more prone to taking bribes? The one that is uh, that is prosperous or the one that is poor? The one that is poor is the one that will be sweeping floor in people's houses. Sweeping floor in people's houses, washing their plate, washing their clothes. From there, the master or the children of the masters can come and press your breast. And there's nothing you will do. There's nothing you can do because you know that you, you have to get paid. People can even lure you to sleep with you. With, because you know that if you if you if it will be giving you good things and sleep with them, it is rare to lure rich folks with in such ways. Rich folks will not come and sleep your will not come and sweep your home, will not come and uh, do any many job in your house. Do not come and do that. If you are going to meet together, you can meet together in an eatery, or you talk on phone, or you meet uh, you meet in a public place in the car. But a poor person have no choice. You have to come to your house. You come. Then you ask, you give them a job to wash to wash the floor. As they bend down, they are washing the floor, they come, they hit their, their bum bum or their, their backside. All these things are because of lack of knowledge. My brothers, my sisters, let us pray for prosperity. Let us watch what we are learning or what we are being taught from time to time. I have a burden in my heart because I've seen so many destinies being destroyed. There was a particular lady, he said she was a Christian born again those days. Because of the church she was attending, she she led Waek in her state, in the southwest state of Nigeria. She led Waek in the whole state. The state government gave her a scholarship to go abroad. That time there was see the old old in Nigeria. She was privileged to go abroad. She said she's not going. That if she travel abroad to the UK, another kingdom, that she was going to Basa, that she was not going to follow God again. Because of what, what the mentality they have, the picture they saw on television, that if a woman wear trousers, that means she has committed sin. Currently, as I'm, as I'm bringing this message to you, I'm currently in India. And in India here, I go to the church. There's no one person that wears skirts to the church. There's no even half. The pastor's wife, they wear trousers. Everybody, it is a culture. So you have your own culture in your place. And then the, uh, you now go and read the Bible that a woman shall not be that way pertaining to a man. Whereas in the same Israel, where the, the scripture where it was written from, they are wearing, the women are wearing trousers. Till date, they are still wearing trousers. That is their normal culture. Now we come to our own people, we put them in bondage. You say you should not wear that trousers belong to men. Then when we have programs linked together, you see those women from, from uh, Asian countries and from uh, the United States, everybody, they come together. Everybody, the population of women wearing skirts today, they are less than 30%. A majority of women today, they are wearing trousers. And that does not mean they are committing sin. I go to the church, that does not mean I'm sinning with anybody. I attend the church with it alone, that does not mean I'm sinning with anybody. Or do anything or suspicion. I'm even happy that I'm in the presence of God. Even though the language they say in the Indian church, sometimes they interpret because of it, but most of them they speak their local language, even in the churches. So you see all these things because of lack of exposure. Many people have been put in bondage. And I pray today, as you're hearing this word, I'm telling you, you have to take out time to extract everything, visit some other countries. Tell your pastor to visit even Ghana, to visit some other countries in Asia. You can sponsor the pastor so that he can have a balanced understanding of what he's going to teach you. Some people even travel. That's when I travel, they see the adamant on what they are teaching. And I pray the Lord is going to liberate you and liberate them too in Jesus' name. Many destinies have been destroyed right inside under the church because the type of teaching people have been taught. And I pray you will be liberated and I will be liberated too in Jesus' name. Things are happening. I'm going to take this message to a part two. And because this is a 10 minute uh, uh, broadcast, let us pray as we go, as we move on to part two. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because of your understanding of your word. I pray 
They will open our eyes to understand the word and we will never go to captivity again in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. I will continue this in the part two. Then we are also going to look at um, look at uh, many other things. There are many videos on this channel. Check them out. And you are going to be glad you did. Then, subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed. Share the link of this video with your family and friends. And then, keep watching. God bless you.